Uh, Councillor Jones, would you like to speak now? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, following the amendment, I'm happy to support the motion to protect children and young people with acute mental health needs. The recent Department of Health Task Force publication, Future in Mind, sets out the national challenge for mental health spend and the needs of children and young people. I would remind councillors, mental health accounts for 23% of the burden of disease, but mental health services are only 11% of the NHS budget. Spend on children and young people's mental health is just 6.6% against 93.4% for adults. 10% of school-aged children are diagnosed with a mental health need and a further 14% have an additional health need, some 24% of a class. 75% of health needs are prevalent by the age of 18, but it takes on average eight years from development to a condition of treatment. Successive governments at Westminster over many decades have failed to tackle the issue. In March, the government announced an additional $1.25 billion for children's mental health services over the course of this parliament to treat 110,000 more children. The Department of Health is expected to ask for local transformation plans in September to realise this funding. The timing is helpful and we will respond in September as part of our commissioning review of mental health services. Decisions about where children and young people with four, tier four mental health needs are placed are currently held by NHS England, although we expect this responsibility to move to the Suffolk CCGs next year. I agree that children and young people with health, mental health needs should be looked after in, in the right provision based on their needs. Where possible, we support children to be at home with their families to maximise recovery and keep them out of hospital. However, where it is not possible to keep children at home or in Suffolk, nor is it the best clinical response, we are fortunate enough to have a high-performing specialist services in surrounding counties that NHS England Commission. Wisbeach, mental health needs with comorbid autistic spectrum disorder, Cambridge, eating disorders, mental health with comorbid mild learning difficulties, Colchester, severe and enduring mental health illness, illness including ac access to psychiatric intensive care, and Chelmsford, eating disorders in, all, in older age groups with transition to adult eating disorders, service if necessary. Sometimes it is more appropriate for children to be treated out of county in these specialist units, and that decision is very much up to the cl clinicians. Overall, the east of England has 164 Tier 4 beds, and on average, Suffolk has 11 placements each year. Further beds across the, count across the county are also assessed on occasion, where this is the, the best service based on the needs of the child or the young person. We are also concerned that the number of beds in the region is insufficient and in May the chair of the Suffolk Safeguarding Children's Board wrote to NHS England to ask about plans to increase the number of suitable beds and that position will be reviewed at the um, Safeguarding Board meeting on Monday. Another gap in, in mental health sufficiency is, is for looked after children and children on the edge of care. We are therefore de developing a new provision with the Priory with an additional 1.3 million from the DFE Innovation Fund. This will be an alternative to Tier 4 out of county provision. Time prevents me from expanding on this, but happy to provide a briefing for members to this new initiative where we are joined by the CCGs, NSFT, the Priory Group and NHS England. It will be independently evaluated with a report going to the DFE and partners. I agree with the need for increased provisions for CAMS in Suffolk, we have, but we, I will very, I, in conclusion, actually, <laughs> I would like to thank uh, Councillor Adams for bringing this motion today and look forward to working with all, all parties 
other agencies for quality mental health provision at all tiers with as early provision as possible and working together to improve the mental health provision for the young people in Suffolk. Thank you. Spot. You were spot on then. Gosh, well done. Okay. Um, I, now... <laughs> I now call on Inga, Councillor Inga Lockington. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you for the motion we have in front of us today. I think it's something which we all can agree on is a very uh, important subject. Um, I noticed there's been a couple of am- or one or two amendments to the motion. The sentence in here which I found a bit difficult uh, because I felt like it was hanging in the air when it says inquiry increase the risk of lack of places. But does, does that mean places in Suffolk or place, where, wherever? You know, I've, I felt that sentence is just like hanging in the air. I actually phoned up the monitoring officer and said, is, is the motion precisely as it was sent in? Um, and it wasn't only me. I did show it to other people. I don't know whether, whether there should have been that the places were, that it was increased the risk of places in county places if we sent too many people out of county. Um, but I will wait and hear that when the summing up come. Uh, but certainly the important thing for our children and young people is that they get their mental health n- needs dealt with. Um, when we meet young people today, maybe 20 or early 20s, who we realize have suffered for years from mental health um, in the family, we for a while had a, had a sort of family member who um, I know was very damaged as a child. And when you come across a young person like that, it is really difficult and you realize how hard it is to try and help somebody when they come to the age of early 20s, when they have been greatly damaged as a child. The more we can do to support the youngsters with all the needs, they, uh, with their needs, but it is important that it is the right place they go to. Um, I think it is right that most people should be treated as close as possible to family, but the important thing is that we get them help quickly and in the right place. Thank you, Councillor Lockington. I have Councillor Ladd now. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think this is a really important subject, and I thank uh, Councillor Adams for, for bringing it here this afternoon, because I actually think any, uh, any raising of the profile of this important subject uh, has got to be good. As Councillor Adams referred to, it was the main topic of the health scrutiny meeting uh, last week. Um, uh, where we've done a full review of not only the Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust, but also of CAMS, which, as you know, is the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services. Um, I think what was very interesting, which came out of that, there was uh, nine recommendations that the health scrutiny made as a result of that. Um, I think that generally the committee felt that there is quite a bit of work to do. There's quite a bit of work going on already, uh, and we, we uh, commend the work that is going on in terms of the collaboration and the working together of all the, all the service providers. However, one of our recommendations, and I'll read this, Chairman, if I can, because um, members may not be aware of this, um, one of our key recommendations was to undertake in early 2016 further scrutiny of the transformation plan to include the impact of co-production and collaboration on service users, relatives and carers, information on the timescales associated with the work and details of measurable outcomes. So I wanted to give members some Uh, reassurance uh, that health scrutiny has got this on their agenda uh, and it will be looked at uh, in more detail Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, it is an important subject Madam Chairman and uh, we've got it there so to give you some reassurances uh, that we will be scrutinising this uh, as it moves forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Next councillor I will call is uh, Councillor Spicer. Uh, Chairman, like others, I think it's really good that we've got this motion and an opportunity to talk about something that's so important um, for 
um, our young people in Suffolk. But, of course, not just for our young people today, but for the um, citizens of the future in Suffolk. Um, it's very interesting. Um, Councillor Adams talked about us, the County Council, having some responsibility in terms of social work and schools. Um, ever since then, I've been scribbling down all the responsibilities we have, and they're sort of getting too numerous and in my three minutes to run through it. But what I want to say is this motion does relate primarily to Tier, tier 4, to some acute issues. But what we need to use the opportunity of this debate is to think about, I don't want to sound like management speak, but the journey and the opportunities, both to identify, to prevent, um, to manage within our own services here in Suffolk. And equally importantly, when people do return, as they do, whether it's been an in-county or an out-county, whatever, uh, uh, to help and support a recovery or, or, or a sustainable um, work, life balance after, life afterwards. And so, therefore, it's really important that, although we may not manage every school, that we do everything we can through training and awareness to make sure schools are getting the support. What about our general practitioners and, and family, pra family doctors? Um, all the early years provision that we've got increasing roles involved in and, and younger. And then, of course, when problems start to emerge, the opportunities via this county council or through it for early support, early intervention, not just to the child, but to their family. Obviously, we've got Suffolk Family Focus, we've got the work of the health and, part of the work of the Health and Wellbeing Board. But, you know, here we need to ensure that partnerships are not just token gestures, particularly with the police and the district and borough councils and their responsibilities, um, so that they are really effective, so that often we can... Um, manage or re sorry, reduce or prevent acute episodes. And then, of course, moving on, we must make sure and that we've got the re appropriate recovery and support. And again, the police have got a big role, district and boroughs over housing. So it's, it's very good to have this discussion. Um, it's good that um, we've got public health, both their budget and their responsibilities within this council. But, but... If we are truly committed, we should use opportunities such as the challenges in mental health to make sure that we are really working towards seamless services with the national health, both in planning and in delivery. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I now move on to Councillor Crossley. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I'm not going to repeat everything that's been said. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, I think it's just important to say that we as a group wholeheartedly support the motion and I welcome Councillor Jones' comments as well, which we also sort of agree with. I mean, it's accepted that sort of Tier 4 um, victims, because they are vulnerable, amongst the most vulnerable of our society, uh, have great difficulty in getting through all the hoops the parents and families have got to go through. Uh, you've got so many different departments and what have you. And I think one of uh, Councillor Adams' points was that this is creating difficulties and we as a council need to put pressure on the NHS or what have you. It's trying to find the right department, in this case the NHS, to take ownership of the problem. And, and move this thing forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, now I have uh, Councillor Gaylord. It's Gaylord. Thank you. Um, my, uh, my point is about uh, early intervention. It's important that help is provided at early stages. If the child and the parents are left with no help, their condition can deteriorate and then it uh, escalates into needing inpatient help, which is what we're talking about, Tier 4 help. Uh, in my role as a therapeutic counsellor for children and young people, I've been contacted by parents of children and young people of all ages who are desperate to find professional help for their children. Some of these do not meet CAM's criteria for help. They are not ill enough. Uh, but their need for support is great and it's pressing. Some are being seen by the CAM service, but the support provided is intermittent 
and there is too long between appointments for it to be effective. This is what I hear again and again. I just want to uh, draw your attention to, in 2013, there was a needs assessment taken by this council that identified a number of issues for the CAM service. These included a lack of awareness of mental health amongst health professionals, an inconsistency of approach across the organisations delivering the CAM service, a lack of joined up thinking, and since then little has improved for those young people facing a crisis in their mental well-being. In order to make the change, we need political will from all sides in this chamber, but especially from the administration, to take the issues of young people's mental health very seriously indeed and press for the improved access to the services they need. Not just, we're not just talking about CAMS services. We're talking about preventative services, services that young people, when we're talking about teenagers, that is accessible to them and is acceptable to them. Um, I would urge you, um, those that need the services, need you to use all your muscle and your influence to ensure that those organisations who provide services take up the gauntlet to improve mental health services for children and adolescents in Suffolk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Armitage, please. Thank you, Chair. As we've heard from Councillor Jones, roughly 10% of children are suffering from some form of mental health problem. In Suffolk, that equates to about 10,000 children. Obviously, this covers a wide range of mental health issues, but if even 1% of those children have severe enough problems to require the highest level of help available at Tier 4 of CAMS, then we're looking at 100 children in need of care with only eight beds to go around. And it's not 1%, it's more. Since April 2013, East Anglia has been referring an average of 69 cases per month to Tier 4 services. And demand is rising, as we're now seeing a steady increase in the number of children being referred to CAMS. Some mental health issues are transient, but childhood mental health issues are often more persistent. At least half of all mental health problems in adulthood start during childhood. Treating sufferers early on in life helps reduce the risk of the, take, the, taking these problems into adulthood, improving their life prospects, as well as saving a lot of money in benefits and medical needs down the line. Being able to treat children with mental health problems through the different tiers of help available through CAMS is only half the story. As anyone who has an interest in mental health is aware, the support of family and friends makes a huge impact on their recovery time and their close proximity is crucial. Mental health professionals regularly raise concerns regarding the problems with access to Tier 4 inpatient services and the risks of available services being located some distance from a child's home, often only accessible after a considerable delay. The safety of children is being compromised whilst they wait suffering from severe mental health problems for an inpatient bed to become available. When beds are found, they are generally a long way from home, making contact with friends and family difficult and leading to longer stays and increased costs. In 2013, a needs assessment of Suffolk CAMS was carried out. and One of the key findings of this was that children requiring Tier 4 services can be placed an excessive distance from home in out-of-county placements. Nothing has changed since that time. No apparent action has been taken, regardless of the report. Mental health problems affect children irrespective of age, ability or wealth. Our society and culture is changing and brings some of these problems along with these changes. It is undeniable that increased social media use and internet use by children has exacerbated the situation and affected the mental well-being of our children. We may not be able to have much influence on the way our society changes, or even influence our own children at times, but we can use our influence on the decision makers who can and do bring about change within the NHS and CAMS. This is all we ask for. We're not asking for money to provide more beds and services, 
as that isn't something that the County Council has the power to do. We only ask that as individual councillors and as a local authority that the Suffolk County Council use all their influence and apply whatever pressure they can to bring about change in the structure of the available Tier 4 services for children in Suffolk. This is change that is long overdue and with the restructuring of Tier 4 due to take place over the next year as the commissioning responsibility transfers over to the clinical commissioning group we believe there is the opportunity to make a huge difference for our most vulnerable children during a time of their greatest need. Thank you very much. Uh, I now call on Councillor Barker. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The number of referrals to the CAM service has risen dramatically in the last five years. The reasons for this are wide and varied, from media portrayals of body image in magazines to bullying on social media, from exam anxiety to increasing financial pressures at home, all affecting young people's mental health. In 2010, there were 4,563 children referred in 2014-15, there were 7,600 children referred to CAMS, a very large increase. And all of us in this council in the chamber, every single one of us, needs to think, what is it in our society that is actually the reason for this increase? These are across the spectrum of need from Tier 1 to Tier 4. But if there are almost twice as many referrals now, we can be sure that there will be twice as many who need to access Tier 4 provision in the near future. This is about prevention. At Carlton Court in my division, a 15-bed ward is expected to be closed in October 2015, just in a few months. There is now concern that under the new commissioning process, these beds may not even be procured. The concern we have is whether there will be enough provision across Waveney and Great Yarmouth, because that's what we're talking about here, a very wide geographical area. This will leave the whole of Waveney and Great Yarmouth, a population of just over 213,000, with just the bare minimum of support that young people need at times of crisis. Also, there are large numbers of people who, even though they might visit, also need these services. They need support in the worst of emergencies. This will increase the pressure on families and has the potential to make hospital stay times longer. We urge you to put pressure on those who provide the services to ensure Waveney and the rest of Suffolk has the mental health capacity our young people deserve. The Tier 4 Commissioning Group have identified the need for more Tier 2 and 3 provision in order to do, reduce the number of Tier 4 patients. But it is still a fact that we do not have enough beds in total currently and projected into the future to provide for these young people with the severest of needs. This surely cannot be tolerated any longer. Young people deserve and need us to support them in their hour of need. I urge you to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have Councillor Guy McGregor. Oh, yes, Madam Chairman. Well, it's been an interesting and, and fine debate. I've certainly learnt a lot from the uh, intensity of, of the contributions here this afternoon. In particular, uh, speaking as a member from a rural part of Suffolk, I'd like to emphasise, of course, that the access problems which have been identified by many members here are increased of sevenfold, in fact, for people who are living in rural areas, particularly in High Suffolk. And therefore, I'm pleased to know, learn that the Health Screening Committee uh, have got this on their agenda, but I do urge them to make special reference to and examine how easy it is or perhaps how difficult it is for young people in remote rural areas to get access to these important services. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. McG Councillor McGregor. Uh, Councillor Finch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, we've heard this afternoon, and I welcome this, this motion this afternoon. Um, it's quite complex in terms of its wording, and I, I welcome the, the amendments that have been made. Um, there's no doubt in my mind the youngsters that need this support where, to where they are sent should be based on clinical need. And that is absolutely primary, no, primary importance. 
Um, for, the, for those like us that live in a rural area and on a county boundary, the right place may be twofold. It might be in Suffolk or it might be out of Suffolk. And sometimes, when you're actually on a county boundary, um, the right place is to go out of county. So it's not quite as black and white that out of county is all bad and, and in county is all good. Um, what I would like to emphasise is actually within the wording of this motion of the importance of prevention. And prevention has to be the way forward for the future. And I would like to applaud what this county council does in supporting organisations such as Homestart. Um, we have a good relation with Homestart South Suffolk. Indeed, Councillor Jones spoke at their AGM, at which I attended only um, a couple of weeks ago. So, Madam Chairman, it gives me great pleasure that I think it's so important that this motion has been brought forward, and I look forward to the influence that we may have to make things better. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Finch. Uh, I now call upon Councillor Sandy Martin. Yes, can I just um, first of all uh, sort of help to answer the question that was raised uh, by Councillor Lockington earlier on. I mean, as I'm sure you would imagine, uh, we spent quite a long time as a group uh, discussing this motion before deciding to put it forward. And um, uh, the increase of the risk of a lack of places, um, if you wanted to expand it, Councillor Lockington would say, increases the risk that there may be an overall lack of places available for young people who need an appropriate place if we were not to have any places in Suffolk, um, which is rather a mouthful, which is why we just said increases the lack of places. But it is an important point because clearly we want children and young people who need uh, Tier 4 provision to get the best possible Tier 4 provision. And if that's in Colchester or in Cambridge or in Norfolk, then that's fine. You know, that's, the, that's where they need to go to get that provision, and we certainly would not argue with that at all. But we do think that there is a need for further provision here in Suffolk, and uh, we're very, very pleased that the, the uh, Conservatives are supporting us in this, in trying to make sure that when uh, the talks take place in September and beyond uh, as to where the provision should take place, that you will put in a good word uh, for possibly having some of that provision here in Suffolk. We need more provision, and if some of it's going to be in Suffolk, then I think that's all to the good, both for children and young people here and also uh, for Suffolk as a whole. And uh, can I just move on to say that we picked Tier 4 for our motion for a specific reason, because we wanted to pick out a specific point that we thought uh, that we could uh, ask you to support, and we're really pleased that you have decided to support it. But clearly, Councillor Spicer is right, and so are the other people who've spoken, Councillor Barker and Councillor uh, Armitage, that the whole of provision needs to be improved. And uh, the more children and young people we can keep out of Tier 4, the better, but the whole of the provision does need to be improved. I think it's, it's, it's a really good day today uh, that councillors from right across the political spectrum have got together to say, yes, we need to do something about this. Yes, we need to improve this provision. Um, it was only at our last council meeting that we all stood for a minute's silence uh, for councillor uh, Matthew Percy, who took his own life. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's a testament to the fact that we all care about such things that we're actually coming to an agreement here today. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Murray. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Yeah, I'm very pleased with today's debate. Um, traditionally, councillors have nothing to do with health or mental issues on the doorstep, but increasingly we're being asked to take part, and that's absolutely brilliant. It is a complicated subject, and, and quite rightly this afternoon, we have strayed off the Tier 4 mentioning in the, uh, in the motion, quite rightly, because it's the whole of the mental health services that we, that we need to try and sort out. I think government has got the message not provided any money of any note, but it has got the message that we have to move things forward and mental health needs parity of, of esteem, parity of help, parity of support, and hopefully parity of finance with, with physical illness. And we've also mentioned Home Start and Suffolk Family Focus, those things that are incredibly important. Uh, and I need to 
uh, support what Councillor Finch said about Home Start being a voluntary organisation in quite a corner, because I chaired another of the, or I spoke at another of their AGMs a couple of weeks ago. Um, they are in something of a corner with the sorts of referrals they're getting now, and they do need support, and they've had that from CYP here with, with official commissioning. Um, we've done a lot in scrutiny. We looked at the radical redesign of the health services for Norfolk and Suffolk two years ago and said, this ain't going to work. Um, and the proof of the pudding is it didn't really work and things have had to be changed. But I think we do have the right team in place and things are changing. I don't want councillors to go away with the view this afternoon that nothing's happening about mental health in Suffolk. Um, we are better off in Suffolk than they, we are in, uh, they are in uh, neighbouring counties at the moment in terms of the numbers of our children having to go out of county for what is very important specialised support. I think what hasn't been mentioned this afternoon is that you do need um, uh, uh, specialised support uh, to get that critical mass of support, not only seeing the specialist psychiatrists and psychologists in these, in these centres, but also uh, children suffering from these conditions get an awful lot of support from peers with the same condition. And they might be on their own in Suffolk with their disorder, but they might be in a group of four, five or six in specialist support. And the same goes for the families, the family groups. And we had very usefully at Health Scrutiny last week um, a family member and a user of services. And that, that always uh, you know, brings tears to the eyes, makes the hair stand up on the back of the neck when we see the reality of, of what is happening. So please don't go away, away with the idea that nothing's happening. A lot is happening, a lot of it un, under the radar and behind the scenes. The Health and Wellbeing Board's quite, quite organised and involved in something called co-commissioning discussions now where NHS England, as you've heard already, um, can commission the Tier 4 stuff, but some of that will be devolved more locally and we will have more of a say when I'm at a committee meeting in a couple of weeks' time to discuss our input as a county council into what the CCGs are, are trying to co-commission. So, uh, a great debate. Thank you very much for talking about it. What we need to do is go away and talk about it on the doorsteps with uh, the people we represent. So, thank you very much. Our final speaker is uh, Councillor O'Brien. Thank you. I've agreed with everything that's been said. I think it's been brilliant. I was at that health scrutiny meeting last week and I was very moved, especially by that, um, uh, um, the, the parent who talked about her experience for her son. He was, only se he was seven years old and when she discovered that there was a mental illness. And she tried desperately for years to get help. And there were, so, there were a myriad of different organisations and each one of them passed her on. And the little boy, the little boy is now a teenager of 14. And things are just beginning to come together. And I think it's so sad that she didn't have that support and that um, he was left just... She wanted desperately to help, and she couldn't. And there was nothing there to help her. And that was very, very moving. And as Alan said, tears came to your eyes. You couldn't help it. Um, but I was going to say that um, the support you're all talking about... That support isn't there, but it's beginning to get there. But there's been such a stigma against um, mental illness, and that's why people just um, have ignored it, because they're frightened of it as well. Everybody's frightened of it. And I think it's, it's got to come that people are made more aware of it. I mentioned it at my parish councils when I've been this week, talked about our meeting and said how marvellous it was, how wonderful it was to hear all this. And they were very shocked, especially knowing that children of 10% um, uh, of children in schools have got that me mental illness. I mean, that is incredible. And I did say at the time it was due to, a lot of it was due to the modern technology. They're all sitting there doing that, going up to their rooms, and, and um, they're not communicating. They're not being sociable. And that is the key. And I think the problem is that if it goes on like that, we're going to end up with a society that will not be able to communicate with each other unless through technology. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about it, and I thank you so much for putting this motion. Thank you very much. I now call upon Councillor Sarah Adams to wind up the debate. Thank you very much, Councillor Storey. Um, you will be glad to know that I'm going to be exceedingly brief. Uh, there'll be no repetition, hesitation, or irrelevant information. All I would like to say is... 
Dr Andrew Mason said from SARS said Suffolk is the mecca of immediate care in the UK. Let's all work together to make Suffolk the mecca for children and adolescent mental health services in the UK. We can do it and we can cooperate. And in, in time, the health service will benefit, but we will all benefit and so will the people of Suffolk. So thank you all very much. I hope everybody will feel they can support this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we'll now move to the vote. Is everyone ready to vote? Jolly good. Um, if you like to, um, if you support the motion, press two on your keypad. Once you've said that you're here. Oh, the amended motion. Sorry, the amended motion. Uh, if we're ready to vote. Has everyone voted? Yes. Okay, we'll uh, get the numbers up for you. 69 nil. Hey. Well, I don't think we've ever had that before. <laughs> Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item uh, five. Seven. Seven, sorry. Is that right? Seven. Seven. Equalities and Inclusion Annual Report 2015. I call upon Sarah, Councillor Sarah Stamp to move the recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to present to you the third Equalities and Inclusion Annual Report for Suffolk County Council, which demonstrates how we're meeting the public sector equality duty under the Equality Act 2010. Delivering services that uh, meet these very important uh, needs of our people of Suffolk, sorry, of the people of Suffolk is rightly so at the heart of absolutely everything we do, and so it should be. We continue to implement our transformation programmes. We continue to reshape and improve our services as we change the nature of demand through supporting individuals to remain independent for longer. Considering the needs of people with the nine protected characteristics is a thread running through this process as service provision changes and evolves. The governance provided by our Strategic Equalities and Inclusion Board, together with equality impact assessment processes, followed by each individual directorate, helps us to ensure that we offer fair access to services for our vulnerable and minority communities. The report in front of you highlights equalities and inclusion activities that have taken place during the, throughout the organisation during the 2014-15 year, as well as how we work closely in partnership with other organisations and communities. As we continually seek to find new ways of working and delivering our services, we do need to continue to work with different communities to consider their particular needs and to find ways to help them to help themselves and others. This is so important, colleagues, and we must get it right. This report sets out how we're working to achieve this right across the organisation. So let, let me give you a few examples. During the year, there's been a creation of an Experts by Experience panel, which is coordinated by the Suffolk Coalition of Disabled People. Members on this panel share their personal experiences of using services. They provide us also with invaluable feedback on proposed service changes, and they take part in focus groups or surveys which inform our decisions. Work to support children, young people and families has included the full adoption of the Suffolk Signs of Safety and Wellbeing Practice Framework. This is central to making every intervention count with families. Over a thousand people from children and young people's services and partner organisations have now undertaken this training. We aim to be representative of the communities we serve and as part of this, the Suffolk Fire and Rescue Service has undertaken some very proactive recruitment campaigns to try and attract even more women to join the service as well as positive outreach activities to attract people from underrepresented groups. Drop curbs are organised by the highways team at over 40 sites in the past year, whilst the passenger transport team have been working with bus operators with the use of low floor buses to improve accessibility for those with mobility problems. Within the council itself, I'm extremely proud that our extremely proactive staff networks have continued to grow and flourish and develop their support for staff from protected groups. As Cabinet Lead for Equalities, I now meet with the chairs of the staff networks regularly to hear about their work and discuss ideas for improving the support we offer staff, and I've been hugely impressed with the drive and enthusiasm of those chairs. 
In fact, we had a meeting this week, and I would urge all members to take the time to learn more about how you could become more involved and engaged, as these staff networks are keen, as am I, to see more member engagement with them. For the 2015-16 year, our corporate equality priorities reflect our commitment to considering equalities both in the work that we do for the people of Suffolk and for our staff. Our work in this area continues to grow and evolve, and having read the report, I hope that you would all agree that it demonstrates how, as an organisation, we respond continuously to the needs of communities across Suffolk, and we consider equalities and inclusion in those activities. The Council is asked to receive this report and reconfirm the commitment to Suffolk County Council having due regard to equalities and inclusion in all that we do and to meeting our equalities duties. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Stamp. I, uh, Councillor Hotfordsberger, I believe you're going to second, is that correct? Would you like yes, thank to you, Madam Chairman. I'm more than happy to second the recommendation before you. Do you wish to speak or, or reserve your No? Councillor Wood. Um, yes, thank you. I mean, I'd, I'd like what you said at the end, that you, you're able to reconfirm your dedication and, and what's in the report. However, I'll bring you to page 8 of the annual report. Item number six, support the delivery of three short-stay gypsy and traveller stopping places in Suffolk. This piece of work was deferred. In view of what we've seen over the past week, few weeks or so, and councillors on your side have been very involved, I think it's very sad to see that this piece of work has been deferred. I know, I know it's a very emotive issue. I mean... So emotive that normal and acceptable behaviour, people accept that sometimes it gets out of hand on both parties, on both sides. So I can remember in this chamber two years ago, we were supposed to take this forward and talk about it. It was withdrawn at the last minute. So in light of the report, in light of the pressure that's on certain places in Suffolk now, pressure on councillors, pressure on the, the gypsy um, tra travelling community, and people who live in the areas where they, where they come, I would like to see this report next week, next year, where this item has been rectified and taken forward. And I think yourself, as the um, qualities of, um, councillor, should be pressing this council and the other district councils to take this item forward. Apart from that, we, we can only support it, but it's very sad to see this item is deferred. Councillor Otten. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think we would like to say that the report is extremely well written, clearly written, um, but I would just like to also raise the issue that I raised at Cabinet, which I was delighted to see that Councillor um, Spicer nodded in, with my agree in agreement with me that we have got to make sure that the language that is used by, in particular, educationalists is of a type that is easy and accessible. My experience is that this is not always the case. Um, and the other issue is that we must ensure that this type um, and this um, equalities and, priori and priorities that we have here, that we take seriously, are also taken <coughs> seriously and adopted by any external contractors that the Council um, uses. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Otten. Uh, I have Councillor Page. Was there, um, as, and that's the last person. Does anybody else wish to speak? Mandy. Mandy. Thank you. Councillor Page. Thank you, Chair. Whilst I notice and applaud the priorities, I'd like to draw your attention to a noticeable gap in our current priorities, which I also raised at Cabinet. Last Tuesday, SEC's adult learning strategy highlighted Suffolk's woeful performance in educating young people with disabilities for employment. We heard that people with disabilities in Suffolk are not gaining the skills to access meaningful employment. And I'm saying the following on behalf of the many people with disabilities who have been failed and continue to be failed in Suffolk. Low academic achievement among Suffolk students with learning disabilities is too often put down to the failure of that student rather than the failure of the Suffolk school system to educate. And very convenient it is of the Suffolk educational system to think so 
We need to examine this. It's not enough to call students with such disabilities special, pat them on the head, give them gold stars and tell them they have completed challenges which didn't challenge them. If it fails, prepare them adequately for a world of work. And it's not enough for educators to wave such young people out of the educational door at the other end of a life of gold stars and unchallenging challenges without taking any care or responsibility for what they've been offered and whether it was fit for purpose. We've got to challenge this. And we need to ask the employers of Suffolk to help us. They've got no qualms in telling schools where they have failed in educating other school leavers. Couldn't they be doing the same favour to to, to, to these, these young people? And our schools should be pointing out to employers if school leavers with disabilities can overcome, we in our schools will both be, actually, can overcome these hurdles. It doesn't make them as good as non-disabled employees. Dealing daily with an unsympathetic, able-bodied world gives such people the potential to be not only more determined, more competent, but more resourceful, more resilient, more capable of dealing with failure and finding other ways around a problem. So they're better, in other words. So... This is my plea for the next year. I'd like our equalities and inclusion policy to recognise this and support Suffolk's disabled young people to achieve what they are capable of rather than patronise the potential out of them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Page. I now call upon the opposition spokesperson, uh, Councillor Mandy Gaylar, to respond. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Um, I wholeheartedly support this report. However, um, I would like to draw your attention to page 8, item 6. Um, I'm not going to repeat it too much, but this consultation was pulled uh, last summer, and a year on, we're in the same position as we were then, uh, in that gypsies and travellers are having no uh, pl- uh, places to stop. Um, now, I'd call on some of you... Uh, uh, district borough councillors as well as county councillors and it does require uh, I'm not by the way um, but it does require you to especially you double hatters to really pull your finger out on this one um, I'm sorry that's where it's at and I'd like to know from yourself councillor Stamp exactly where are we at in this process now what's happening thank you Councillor Stamp, you have five minutes. <laughs> Blimey. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, <laughs> well, I'll take my time as I've been given away. Um, I, I can give you a really quick answer to the Gypsy and Traveller um, issue. I was as disappointed as anybody else at the moment. We've got two um, illegal and authorised encampments in Bury St Edmunds, so it is an issue that's high on everybody's radar, and Gypsy and Traveller um, does form part of my new responsibilities. Uh, the, uh, there is a paper being taken to the... Suffolk Public Sector (laughs) Leaders Group tomorrow on this very issue and we had a meeting on it this morning and uh, one of the things that um, I was very clear and the leader was very clear about is that we need to have a very, very um, clean and um, transparent communication strategy around it so everybody will be communicated with and we'll be working very closely with the boroughs and districts on this issue Um, so we'll be moving forward with that so hopefully that answers that question. Um, Councillor Otten... Uh, I, I feel really passionate about communication and plain English, and it's something that um, I'm sort of taking forward in all the areas of my responsibility, really, is to make sure that we're, we're communicating with the people of Suffolk, and I think we forget that sometimes and we get a bit lost in local authority speak, which doesn't mean a lot to a lot of us, so um, how we expect our residents to understand it. So um, I absolutely agree and support you on that. Um, and Councillor Page, um, the learning um, disability strategy was um, approved, I believe, by the Health and Wellbeing Board last week. I was unable to be there, but I believe it was. Um, and I think that um, I've taken on board your comments, and I believe Councillor Hoffmansberg has as well. And hopefully the introduction of that strategy um, will, will, help, will go some way. Um, but yes, I, 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 again, I feel very strongly that we should be um, inclusive right across the board, and um, that includes with young people with disabilities, and we should be maximising their potential because their potential is as, as big and as, you know, that they can reach for the stars just as, as much as anybody else can. Um, so hopefully that reassures you. Thank you. Um, Councillors, it's uh, uh, that our action recommended is to receive this report and reconfirm the commitment of. Suff- of Suffolk County Council having due regard to equalities inclusion. Do we all support the, the report? Thank you very much.
Uh, I'll now move on to Agenda Item 8, which is a report by the Director of Resource Management. I call upon Councillor Matthew Hicks to move the recommendation. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, this report in front of you provides you with details on the progress Suffolk County Council has made with two of its key strategies, namely the Health and Safety Strategy and the Working Well for Suffolk Strategy along with the ongoing work to manage, safely, sorry, to manage safety, health and well-being across the Council. To date, the full reports have been approved by the Safety, Health and Wellbeing Board and endorsed by the Corporate Management Team. Today I'm asking you to acknowledge the progress that has been made in the 14-15 financial year and to note the award that the Council has achieved as a demonstration of this. The business case for effective health and safety management is clear. It keeps our staff well at work while also ensuring that our activities do not adversely affect others. As the largest employer in the county, the Council has both the moral duty and a legal duty to ensure that our staff, visitors, contractors and members of the public that are engaged in our services are able to lead their lives safely and healthily. I'd like to remind everyone in the organisation we have a responsibility to ensure that we improve the health and safety management arrangements, and that includes us as councillors. I would therefore ask you please to reflect on your roles in ensuring that health, safety and wellbeing matters are considered in all aspects of your role. So in summary, Madam Chairman, we have come a long way, and this is evidenced by the Council's achievement of a silver award in occupational health and safety from the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents for the second consecutive year. And I congratulate Paul Butcher and the whole team on this achievement. However, we recognise there is, of course, still more to do. There are still areas to be improved on, and these have been prioritised and will attract the most attention this coming year. Madam Chairman, the report before you today marks an important milestone in our journey of continually improving safety, health and well-being, and I commend it to you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hicks. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Spence, uh, do you wish to speak? Or? Thank you, Madam Chairman. No, I'm very, very pleased to second this recommendation and I reserve my right to speak. Thank you. Do we have any other, anybody else wishing to speak? Ah, Councillor Hudson. I, I believe, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, I believe that there should be more details in this annual report summary regarding what has been done on the implement, implementation of policies and actions to reduce stress. Oops. <laughs> it, it is important that councillors know where, so, where resources are being directed in order to gain the best results and also to ensure that efficiencies, efficiency is not unnecessarily compromised. Stress is an area that causes physical and mental problems and lead to inefficiencies, absenteeism and litigation. This, re this report confirms that stress is an area that Suffolk County Council has failed to tackle and it could be that some areas of legislation are being gold-plated in order to gain silver, silver status at the expense of more significant areas of health and well-being, such as the difficult area of reducing stress. However, details are skated over, leaving them hidden in full reports. This has the effect of reducing the impact and making it less likely that actions will be taken. Taking. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hudson. Uh, do we have any other commentators on the report? Councillor Spence, do you wish to speak now? I would, I would just like to say one thing, Madam Chairman. 
Um, and because we've had a lot of discussion earlier on the motion regarding the need to, to care for those young people who um, suffer from mental health issues, can I just draw attention to the last page of the report on page 42? Because I remember being in Councillor Hicks' position last year when I was asked questions in submitting last year's report about what we are doing as a council to protect the mental health of our staff and colleagues. And a number of colleagues on the benches opposite raised those questions with me. And I think that actually, when you look at what's been done over the last year, a lot of really positive things have happened to actually try and address and support not only the mental health, but also issues regarding stress, because Councillor Hudson has mentioned that, but I think that, that those things are all there to actually try and help and support our staff and colleagues um, with mental health issues and with stress. Thank you. Um, I believe that Councillor Jacqueline is the opposition spokesperson for this paper. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. Um, I've got nothing to add, really, apart from to say um, that we support the recommendation and uh, hope it goes through. Thank you, Councillor Jacqueline. <laughs> Councillor Hicks, would you uh, wish to sum up? Thank you. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, thank you, Councillor Hudson, for raising the very important issue of stress. Um, it is something that is taken extremely seriously at Suffolk County Council, and a huge amount of resource is focused on that particular issue. Um, I would urge you possibly to go on to the uh, Suffolk My SCC, where you can get a full copy of both reports in great detail, and I think you'll find there's more information there that hopefully will satisfy you. If not, I'd be happy, obviously, to meet you outside this room. Thank you. I, uh, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are councillors uh, uh, agreed with the paper? Agreed. Thank you. We'll move on then to agenda item nine, uh, which is uh, the, uh, another report by the Director of Resource Management. I call upon Councillor Christopher Hudson to move the recommendation. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. I draw colleagues' attention to pages 43 and onwards. Uh, in your papers before you uh, and invite you to consider them uh, and approve them. They are, they, they are a matter of almost statu statutory instrument that was brought before us and uh, I, I would like to invite Councillor Martin to, to give us his views as well and if he would be prepared to second it, please. Thank you. Councillor Martin, do you wish to second? Well, uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I, I was not expecting to second this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to do so. Um, it, I, I have to say I think that this is uh, yet another of those constitutional changes which uh, points up the anomalies of uh, government regulations which change without uh, reference to the people that they are meant to apply to. Um, we discussed this at the Constitution Working Party. We decided that the whole system was completely unworkable. The changes were completely unnecessary. However, we do have to make these changes to our Constitution in order to keep this side of the law. And given that uh, I, along with all the other councillors in this room, don't want to be on the wrong side of the law, we, we do have to do this. But my, uh, my expectation is that the government will realise that this is all a complete mess and in uh, six months' time we'll be doing this again in the opposite direction. <laughs> but thank you very much. Does anyone wish to follow that? <laughs> no? Uh, Councillor Hudson, do you wish to uh, wind up? Well, as you can see, it's self-explanatory, the, uh, the papers that we've been able to read there. But uh, we, did, we did look through it at length, and it did bring to light anomalies. And uh, there was a lot of great discussion, Madam Chairman, because it, it did involve personalities, and it's, it's extremely difficult to get to terms with this when you're dealing with colleagues, personal contracts, life and within the council and without it. But uh, despite that, it is a matter of law, as Councillor Martin has um, informed us this afternoon, and I... Uh, Commend it with reservations accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hudson. Uh, are, is the Council happy to accept the recommendations in 3A and B? Thank you very much. We'll move on then to Agenda Item 10, which is Cabinet Member Reports and Questions. There have been 19 questions received from Councillors. 
Um, I will take these in the order in the pa of, on the paper which is tabled in the chamber. Um, if you're not here, oh sorry, if the person who's asking the question isn't here, then we will move on rapidly. Uh, I have a question. Um, I'm being asked for a break. Um, no? Do we want a break? We'll carry on. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Hudson uh, to um, uh, can Councillor Finch. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, despite assurances of action from the previous Cabinet member, Care MG continues to fail to reach its target in less than 55% of the operational performance measures in March 2015 a month-on-month -month decline from January. Can the new Cabinet member give us a clear assurance that, ro that robust measures really are now in place to ensure that the electorate of Suffolk will get the highways maintenance service they deserve and have paid for? Sorry, Councillor Finch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hudson, for your, for your question. Um, I would like to say I'm, I'm very well aware of the performance issues surrounding the Highway Services contract. I've discussed these issues with our senior officers and the senior management within our contractor, Kia MG. And I can assure you and the Council that we're working with them to drive this forward as a matter of urgency to improve the service this summer. I want to point out that where those targets have not been met, financial deductions have been made. Thank you, Councillor Finch. Councillor Hudson, do you have a supplementary? Thank you. Um, as the current highways contract with KMG is due to end in 2018, could you give some indication as to what attention has been given to the contract renewal process as recommended by the scrutiny committee earlier this year? In particular, I would like to know about the progress of the high-level summary which uh, was to be produced providing information about the purpose and content of the contractor's plan and progress towards the empowerment of frontline staff to seek efficiency improvements. Councillor Finch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Well, I can assure you that that particular subject, Councillor Hudson, has been discussed in a meeting this last two weeks. Um, we are looking at every detail, and I'm being assisted by Councillor Michael Gower, in terms of the contract itself, um, to see how that we can improve this performance and to see how we can follow the recommendations of the Scrutiny Committee to ensure that we can make this better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Finch. 